Hello again, this is Dr. Jamnadis with Cardiovascular Interventions in Orlando. And part of my educational program, this today's topic is EECP. And EECP is not really heard of much, but I've been doing it for 20 years in my office. So what is EECP? EECP stands for Ex Enhanced External Cardiac Pulsation Therapy. And what it involves is we place blood pressure cuffs, large cuffs, around the thighs and the calves and around the pelvis. And then the patient's attached to an EKG machine and based on the EKG, the blood pressure cuffs on the legs come on and squeeze the legs and release, squeeze and release. And when they squeeze, the blood column in the aorta and the legs moves up and into the coronary arteries, creating a pulsatile flow in the coronary arteries. So you get increased blood flow in the coronary arteries. And when you do that, that is what enhances the blood flow inside the coronary muscles and the patients feel less angina. So this therapy is conducted in the office and the patients lie down on the machine for one hour at a time. And we have 35 sessions. So Monday through Friday, five sessions. So it's a seven week program. And the idea is that by doing the counter pulsation every day for one hour, the patient will build up what we call collateral blood flow. So what is collateral blood flow? Collateral blood flow is that when there's a blockage in one of the arteries of the heart, these counter pulsations will stimulate the growth of little side vessels that will bypass, find ways around the blockage and supply the muscles further down with blood and oxygen. Thereby, the patients don't get chest pain. So it's predominantly used and approved by Medicare for patients who are still having angina or patients who have blockages that you cannot put a stent in or you cannot do bypass surgery or the patients opt not to have those types of invasive procedures and they want a natural way to grow new blood vessels in the coronary arteries. So it's not a very glorious, it's not as glorious as bypass surgery, but does it work? And the answer is yes, because these patients that come in here, dedicate the time to do this, more than two thirds of them notice a difference within two weeks. At the end of the course, 90% of the patients have said, not only to me, but also in the reports, the published reports, that their angina is much better. Functionality is also better. Shortness of breath gets better. So this therapy is performed in the office, EECP. It is approved by insurances and Medicare. We identify these patients in our office by first looking at the angiograms to make sure that their arteries are so bad that I can't put a stent in them and they're not candidate for bypass surgery. On the other hand, we found that once we started doing these EECP procedures, a lot of patients who had shortness of breath started saying that their shortness of breath is better. And subsequently, the studies have now shown that the diastolic function, which is the heart muscle relaxing, actually gets better as well. And when that happens, the pressure in the heart gets lower, the wedge pressure gets lower, the patients have less shortness of breath. So, actual myocardial systolic function, which is the contractility of the heart, may not improve drastically, but the diastolic indices, meaning the relaxation of the heart muscle, does appear to improve after doing EECP, and therefore shortness of breath gets better. In fact, there was one trial that showed that even congestive heart failure patients did benefit from doing this therapy. So currently, the insurances will not pay if that is the diagnosis, which is congestive heart failure. They'll only pay for this coverage if the patient has angina. So the course is fairly expensive if you're gonna pay cash out of the pocket. But in the overall scheme of things, it's not that expensive. It's approximately $4,500 for the entire course. Most of the ones we do here are covered by insurance, but I occasionally get patients who come here with no insurance or they want to do this outside the insurance. But an intriguing number of patients recently have been coming here because we're doing coronary calcium scores on them. 
and they have extensive amount of calcium built up in the walls of the arteries. So, we know that coronary calcium in the walls of these arteries is equivalent to atherosclerosis. But when blockages build up in the walls of these arteries, it can grow inside the lumen or on the outside of the artery. So we now know from autopsy studies as well, that most of this atheroma or atherosclerosis grows on the outside of the artery and only a minority actually constricts the artery. Now, if it constricts the inner lumen of the artery, the patient will either have a positive stress test or will start having angina. So a narrowing inside the artery caused by atherosclerosis, caused by calcium, is very easy to detect because you can see it on the stress test and also the patients will be complaining of some chest pain or may not complain of chest pain, but they'll have a positive stress test. But the vast majority of patients who have a high coronary calcium score are not having chest pain and they're not having a positive stress test, but they have a lot of plaque. So what's the problem with that? Well, the studies have now clearly shown that the more coronary calcium you have on the walls of the arteries, the higher your risk that it's going to rupture. And if that plaque ruptures in the walls of the arteries, a blood clot forms there and suddenly you go from good circulation inside the artery to a huge blood clot and now you have no circulation. So that patient will now present with a heart attack. So a myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack, is not caused, as most people think, by gradual narrowing of the artery to the point where, oh, well, now it's closed off completely. Because most of those patients, you'll be able to pick them up either through a positive stress test or they're having symptoms. A majority of the heart attacks, over 75% of all heart attacks, occur at sites in the artery that are less than 70% blocked. So they're not restricting the flow because flow in an artery is only restricted at 70%. So these people are walking around having a great time. They may even climb a mountain or go hiking and they have no chest pain. The next day, if they have coronary calcium, if they have atheroma, it suddenly cracks and a blood clot forms. So here with the onset of these investigations we're doing with coronary calcium study, which is a CT scan, it is it takes only three minutes to do a CT scan. And we can see that the patient has built up all this calcium in the walls of the arteries. Then we do a stress test and we say, well, you know what? It's not causing any blockage. We need to put you on a prevention program. And our prevention program is very rigorous over here. But in addition, some patients have opted to do ECP. So the question is, why would you do ECP in that patient when they're not having any chest discomfort? So this is quite controversial, but it will not be covered by insurance. But think about this. If an artery shuts down because of a blood clot, and if you have good collaterals, then the day that happens, you will survive the heart attack because you've got lots of collaterals, so you won't get the massive amount of damage. When you don't have collateral blood flow and you only have one major channel and that shuts down, you suffer from a massive amount of muscle damage because of the lack of circulation. When you have adequate collaterals, those collaterals save muscle. So even though you do get the heart attack, you don't end up with cardiogenic shock or you don't end up with a very low ejection fraction. And we know this is true because in young patients, they haven't had time to build up collaterals. So when they get a heart attack, it's a massive heart attack versus that same location, same artery shutting down in an older person, let's say in his 80s, he is actually going to paradoxically survive that heart attack because he's had time to build up collaterals. So over the past 30 years of practice, I've noticed that older patients do have better collaterals. Well, why don't we take younger patients who have coronary calcification, who have atherosclerosis, who, had, who are at risk of rupture and create the collaterals of an 80 year old so that when they do get a plaque rupture, they are less likely to suffer from a massive myocardial infarction. So they may still get the heart attack, but instead of the ejection fraction dropping to let's say 30% and causing catastrophic congestive heart failure, they may end up with a 45% ejection fraction. 
So are there any studies that have been done to prove this? And the answer is no, because you'd have to do a randomized control study to show that yes, if I did ECP when you're in your 50s and then you get a heart attack in your 70s, you are more likely to survive that. Well, you can see that the chronology is just not going to be a practical one. So my position on this is that patients who have a high coronary calcium score and incidentally, everybody at risk should be doing their coronary calcium score. If they're at high risk, this is another modality that they should consider, the EECP. And you do the course, and you now you're gonna do up lots of collaterals. So God forbid if one of those plaques ruptures, you're actually gonna have a greater chance of survival. So when I see these patients in the office now, we do offer them a wide variety of treatments for atherosclerosis. ECP is one of them. For angina patients, patients who also have inoperable coronary artery disease, severe disease not amenable to angioplasty, diffuse disease where the arteries are ex exceedingly tiny, and patients who have high coronary calcium scores. So I hope this is interesting to you all because I think that atherosclerosis has been misunderstood for so many years. The cause of heart attacks has been misunderstood for so many years. But now we understand plaque builds up, calcium builds up, but the bigger danger is when it cracks and causes a heart attack. That's the danger. And then if you don't have adequate collaterals, you're gonna have a problem. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and I'll bring you some more educational videos in the future. Take care.